I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question on asymptotes. We are given six equations here and on the right side you see six graphs. You have to match each equation with their graph and uh, you can take horizontal asymptote as the criteria for matching the graphs. Okay. Pause your video, match and then look into my suggestion. While you do it, we'll discuss how to find horizontal and vertical asymptotes and also oblique asymptotes for any given function. So we have a few more examples here. So let's discuss how to find the asymptotes when functions are given to us, right? And then we'll get back to our multiple choice question. There are five equations here. We'll see how to find horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, and oblique asymptote for these functions. So the criteria here is, let's discuss horizontal asymptote first. For finding horizontal asymptote, we are checking degree of numerator and denominator, right? So you need to check degree of numerator and denominator. So let us say degree of numerator is n and for denominator is m. In that case for horizontal asymptote, we have horizontal asymptote only if the degree of numerator is less than or equal to that of the denominator. Correct? So based on this criteria, let us look into the horizontal asymptotes to start with. The first equation, the degree is same. So in this case, n equals to m. So whenever n and m are same, then the equation is of horizontal asymptote, y equals to ratio of leading coefficient. So the equation is y equals to 2 over 3. So that is for horizontal asymptote. In this particular case, degree of n is equal to m. However, this is very special. Square root is always positive, correct? So whenever we do square root, square root of x squared is absolute value of x. This is always positive. However, when you look into the numerator, it could be positive or negative, right? In any case, the degree is 1. In this case, both same, right? Both degree is same. And therefore, what do you expect? You expect coefficient here is minus 5. So we have two horizontal asymptote. One is y equals to minus 5 and the other one, when you are approaching to minus infinity, this will become positive, right? Minus times minus. So the other one is positive 5. So in this particular case, actually, you will get two horizontal asymptotes and that's a very critical thing. You should not miss the second one. Now, C degrees are again the same. However, you see this minus 3 written here. So we change the position. Normally, you'll find the leading coefficient to be written first, but in the test, it may not always be same. So here again, we have same degrees. And the rule is ratio of leading coefficients. A ratio of leading coefficients is minus 3 and 1. So it is minus 3. Now, in this particular case, it is 3 plus something and that something approaches 0 since the degree of denominator is higher. So this part is 0, right? Kind of when x is approaching infinity, negative or positive. However, 3 plus indicates they are approaching the value of 3. So since the degree of numerator is lesser than m, this part is 0. However, we have 3 plus something. So y equals to 3 becomes your horizontal asymptote. The last case here is y cube over x square minus 1. Here we do not have any horizontal asymptote. In this case, we expect oblique asymptote, correct? So we'll also see how to find equation of oblique asymptote. For that, we have to divide the numerator by the denominator. We'll get a linear equation. That will be the equation for the asymptote, correct? 
Now, first, let's look into uh, the vertical asymptotes. Then we'll get back to oblique asymptotes. For vertical asymptotes, we have to see the denominator. So now we are looking at vertical asymptotes. So we have to check the denominator equals to 0. Now in this case, 3x squared plus 2, if you want to make this as 0, then x squared should be negative, which is not possible. So there is none, right? In this case, no vertical asymptote. In this particular case, also, denominator has x squared minus 2 term, so there is no vertical asymptote. Here, the denominator can be made 0 for x equals to plus minus 1. So the equation is x equals to plus minus 1. Both values will make denominator 0. The last one, I mean here, since it is x to the power of 4, it can never be negative. So here again it is none. This is similar to what we had and it will have a, a asymptote at plus minus 1. So, so okay, let's write x equals to plus minus 1. So we have done for vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Now let us see how to find vertic, uh, oblique asymptote. So in this case, oblique asymptote you can find by dividing x cubed the numerator by the denominator. The numerator, some terms are missing. We'll write x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. And we have to divide by x squared plus 0x minus 1. So, so when you divide, we'll take three terms and times it with x. So we get x cubed and then we get 0x squared minus 1 times x is minus x. So when you take away, uh, you get minus x becomes plus x plus 0. So y equals to x becomes your oblique asymptote. So we have here y equals to x as oblique asymptote. Correct? So that is how you find oblique asymptote. So no oblique, right? No horizontal asymptote. So what you have seen here is for horizontal asymptote, degree of numerator is lesser or equal to denominator. For vertical asymptote, what are we going? We are equating denominator to zero. Will give us vertical asymptote. For oblique asymptote, degree of numerator n is greater than m. It is in fact equal to m plus one to get oblique linear oblique. Right. Now let's get back to our original question, which was to match the graphs for the given asymptotes. Okay. So there you go. Now we know how to find horizontal asymptotes. So let's figure out what horizontal asymptotes are and then we'll match them up. In this particular case, degree of numerator, denominator is same. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals to 3, right? And both are square terms here, so it is non-negative. The function is always positive. Now y equals to 3, we have this particular uh, plot. And with x equals to 0, it does match, right? So, so we got the first one here, a, which matches with this. So let me write a here, okay? Now let's look into the next one, which is square root function in the denominator. So we're now looking into B. As I said earlier, square root really means that it is always positive, correct? So, but the numerator in this case could be positive or negative. That means degrees are same, right? Degrees are same. So we do have horizontal asymptote. Uh, but in this case, the horizontal asymptote will be plus and minus 2. So we have two asymptotes here. The only figure with matches with this is, is right there, correct? So that becomes the section to look for for, for portion 2, right? Let me make, make arrow for first also. Right. Now the next one here is x 
over x square plus 1, no vertical asymptote. But since degree of denominator is higher, we have y equals to 0 as our asymptote, right? So y equals to 0, it is this graph right there. This is the only one where y has 0. To test it out, what we can do is, if I place x equals to 0, it goes through 0. If I place x as 1, then we have some value half or right. So it just matches. So we have this as our match for part C. Now let's do part D, where it is 2 plus something, right? So, so when it is 2 plus something, and this something is approaching 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at 2, right? So, and also you'll notice all this is positive, correct? Horizontal asymptote at 2, all this is positive. And 2 plus means greater than. So the figure which matches is right there. So this is D for us. Now, uh, so we have here now E, which is 5 minus something, right? 5 minus. So that means, and the figure here is x squared in the denominator. That means horizontal asymptote is going to be at 5. And everything is below 5. This is positive always. So it matches with, with this graph here. So that is, that is the one we're talking about. The last one here, we have same degrees. Since the degrees are same, we have a vertical, uh, we have a horizontal asymptote, which is ratio of these two. So y equals to 2 is our horizontal asymptote, right? So uh, the graph which is left here is f matching y equals to 2. And the difference between this and the previous one, which we matched with d was that this figure here is always positive and therefore the graph is above 2. In this particular case, it could be below 2 also, right? And that's how they are different. So I hope you appreciate that part. So this is kind of like this. So that is how you can match all your <coughs> equations with the diagrams based on asymptotes. I hope that gives you a good review. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thank you and all the best.